Well, I wanted to welcome you to the LEAD Center's uh, Live from the LEAD online. Uh, my name is Paul Barnes. I'm on the faculty of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln at the Glencorf School of Music. I was thrilled when Bill invited me to uh, spend an evening with you. I'm so happy to invite you into our home. And, um, but more importantly is that I hope to raise a lot of money for the LEAD Center. They have supported my projects in such a fabulous way. Uh, so please know that there is a link in the comments and also on the Facebook page and on the LEAD's uh, website for you to donate to the relief fund. Uh, the amount of money that they've lost is, is very tragic just simply due to the circumstances of the virus. So I've got a really fun program um, planned for all of you. Uh, I have a lot of my composers, fr composer friends that are going to be joining us. Uh, I have a lot of Philip Glass fans from around the country that I'm hoping will be coming in and uh, giving their requests and uh, uh, other things like that. Um, so what I'd like to do, uh, since I've advertised this as kind of a greatest hits, I'd like to start out the evening playing my number one streamed hit from Philip Glass. It is Orfe and the Princess. Uh, Philip Glass was at the Lead Center um, doing his digital opera Monsters of Grace and we met in my studio and worked out exactly which movements of Orfe to transcribe and so I transcribed seven of them and I'd like to play one of those for you right now.
that piece does um, exhibit what I have affectionately called the love progression. The reason I'm bringing this up is that that love progression returns in Philip Glass's very, very beautiful Annunciation Piano Quintet that I premiered with the uh, Chiara Quartet at the Lead Center and had our big CD recording uh, release uh, back in October. Um, that progression goes like this, and you're going to hear it later on in the evening. That is Philip Glass's musical way of symbolizing love. Now, one of the most important works that Philip Glass wrote for me is his Piano Concerto Number no. 2. And uh, I have been privileged over the last 10 years, whenever I perform it, to perform it with a very, very dear friend of mine, Ron Warren. Uh, Ron is Cherokee, Native American flute player, and has become a very, very dear friend. I've only recently realized that Ron is also a composer. And so I premiered a piece uh, that he wrote for me called Distances Between. And I just want to say a little bit. I want to mention that for those of you that are interested in learning anything more about the music, all of the program notes are on the Lead Center's uh, website. So you can download those. And if you're interested in learning more about a lot of the music that I'll be playing tonight, please feel free to uh, do that. Um, any, in any event, Distances Between, uh, I premiered it last October at the, uh, at the Omaha Conservatory of Music. What's most interesting about this particular piece is that it reveals two different realities that all human beings kind of inhabit. One, which is the reality of nature. And so there's this very, very beautiful depiction of an objective nature. And then that is always immediately contrasted with the human response to that beauty. Uh, Ron made a very beautiful video where he talked about this piece and even played his flute in a very, very beautiful way. One of the things that he made clear was that the melodic writing in the human, which goes like this, was written to fit perfectly on the Native American flute. So in any event, what I'd like to do now is play for you Distances Between Two by Ron Warren.
thank you, Ron, for writing such a glorious, glorious piece um, for me. Um, these are troubled times, to say the least, and to have a piece that's that beautiful and that serene, um, at least for me, it's been incredibly, incredibly meaningful. Um, I'd like to move on now to some chant-related music. Um, Again, I want to encourage everyone listening, uh, please donate to the uh, Lead Center at the link uh, in the comments or on the Facebook uh, page. Um, they have been such an important uh, part of my professional life and of everyone in the country and statewide. Um, I'd like to play a piece that is based on Byzantine chant. Many of you know that I do a lot of Chanting, I'm the head chanter at Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church, and several composers have written uh, pieces for me based on Greek Orthodox chant. This next piece is written by a very dear friend of mine, Victoria Bond. Victoria and I have been collaborating for, oh my gosh, 20 years at least. I've recorded many of her concertos. She's written uh, many pieces for me based on Byzantine chant. Um, Right now, the liturgical period that the Orthodox are going through, this is called Bright Week. We have just celebrated our Easter. And here in Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, my church had a very unique Holy Week, to say the least, as did everybody of any faith tradition. Um, and so many of these beautiful hymns that we're used to hear, hearing during Holy Week, we never heard. One of those hymns is Simeron Kremate, which is Today is Suspended. And what Victoria did when I chanted this hymn, hymn for her, where she combined this also with this very, very beautiful Passover hymn. So what I'd like to do is chant the uh, beginnings of each just to show you how they're related to each other. The Simeron theme um, starts out this way. Simeron, And then the Jewish Tal theme, the Passover theme, is Tal, 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 Lieferat Sonaksak. And Victoria was just amazed that these two hymns had such common melodic material that she created this very, very beautiful piece for me. What I'd like to do first of all is introduce a very exciting group that I've been promising to invite uh, and introduce. This is the Cornhusker Digital Byzantine Choir. Um, they are making their debut performance right here for all of you. Um, they are, I've given them kind of names. Um, it's Thanasi, Costa, Yanni, and Dimitrios. And these are all named after four of my absolute favorite chanters. And they are going to help me with the E song that you will hear. Uh, and they are sitting right up here on my Steinway. So what I'd like to do is chant a little bit of the Simaron Kermata in the way that you would have heard it last week uh, during, our, uh, during our Holy Week uh, services.
I love these guys. Um, they have not once ever gone out of tune and they're really easy to get along with. So anyway, that gives you an idea of what the chant sounds like in its more uh, original form. And what I'd like to play for you now is Victoria Bond's Cimarron Cremato. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you again, Victoria, for writing that remarkable piece. Um, I believe Victoria is listening um, from her place in the East Hamptons. Um, and I hope she's safe. I know it's difficult for her to get back to her home in, uh, in uh, New York City. So anyway, thank you again for writing such a, uh, such a beautiful piece. Um, I wanted to present my first world premiere tonight. Um, this is a piece that was written for me by uh, Ivan Moody, who I believe is listening right now. I saw you online from Portugal. So it is probably 2 a.m. right now in Portugal, in Lisbon, I believe is where you are. So anyway, thank you so much for, uh, for staying up and especially for writing this piece. Uh, Father Ivan is an Orthodox priest um, and so has written many works for me based on various types of Orthodox chant. The story behind this piece is that, like the rest of everybody on the planet, uh, Father Ivan is quarantined. And it's not really so bad for composers. I was just talking to Philip Glass today on the phone, and he was saying that he's happy as a lark because he's getting so much work done and uh, composing. So Father Ivan was writing these short character pieces for his piano friends from around the country. And he wrote this beautiful piece. I just got it, I believe, last week. So it's very fresh. So this is the quickest I've ever done a world premiere. Um, in any event, it's entitled Spring. Um, and it's written for me with the Christ is Risen greeting that we all greet each other with during this very joyous Paschal season. Uh, Christos Anesti is the famous chant that we sing all throughout the Easter season. And you will hear throughout this short two and a half minute work, this call to Christos Anesti. Those are the first several words. Christos Anesti, etc. So anyway, uh, Father Ivan, thank you so much for writing such a beautiful piece for me. And this is the world premiere of Spring.
Thank you again, Father Ivan, for that beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, I do need to introduce my recording engineer today, and he is also monitoring the feed. It's interesting, I have the feed going on while I'm playing, and it's crazy because it's going like crazy with everything going on here. Um, oh, Chip Hughes, it's wonderful. Chip is watching a big Philip Glass fan from uh, Hawaii, uh, and it's good to uh, see you. Um, you know, I've gotten some really remarkable publicity thanks to the wonderful work of everybody at the Lead Center, but I also am related to a profoundly gifted photographer. Uh, Peter, can you come here for a minute? I'd like you all to see my son. He is also monitoring. This is my son, Peter. Great. Peter, say hi to everyone. Hello. Terrific. He's also been in charge of the lighting. Peter is a phenomenal photographer, as you have all seen, and so has helped me out tremendously. Uh, any negative comments? No. No? Sure? Everything's good so far? Okay, great. Keep monitoring. Any requests yet? Nope. All right, good. So until I get requests, I will just play whatever I want. And uh, looking forward to all of that. Um, again, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that the Lead Center needs your support. Um, this has been a historically tragic time for all ORTS organizations. And so please be generous with your support for the LEAD Center um, and uh, for the many, many other wonderful performances that, that I'll be announcing a little bit later on uh, this evening. And since I did advertise this as a Greatest Hits Day, I do want to play uh, probably one of the most important pieces that changed the course of my life. Um, 25 years ago, last month, is when I met Philip Glass here in Lincoln, Nebraska, on that, uh, on that plane ride after I had finished my job interview at, uh, for the university. And I told him that I was playing in New York the following season, and did he have any piece of music that I could play of his? And he handed me, he had it in his briefcase, a copy of his music director's transcription of Satyagraha. And I played it on my recital that following season, and that pretty much changed the course of my life. Um, and it's been one of my most popular uh, pieces to play throughout my 25 years of working with Mr. Glass. So I'd like to play for you today um, my transcription from Satyagraha.
I would also encourage any of you, if you're interested in hearing these on a more regular basis, basis uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I have a lot of these uh, recordings. I was very happy to be interviewed this morning by Jen Randall of NET Radio, um, where she, I was able to play a note-perfect performance of Akhenaten because she played it from a recording. So in any event, uh, thank you all for coming uh, again tonight. Um, again, I want to encourage all of you to uh, donate to the LEAD Center at the links that are in your, um, in your uh, uh, comments uh, on this page. And also there's a link on the Facebook page and on the LEAD's uh, website. So it's so wonderful to see so many people watching. I'm seeing a lot of people from church, so thank you all. And so many people throughout all of the uh, all of my travels and things like that. I'm so glad you were able to join me. You have some requests. The cafe, etudes by uh, six, six okay. to twenty. Okay, thank you. Um, I just had a question here. Um, I'm going to play one uh, the second world premiere uh, of the evening, and. Um, I did 
Just get my wife told me that I did get some requests and I will be playing those a little bit uh, later on. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with David Von Kampen for several years and I've just loved his writing, especially his choral writing, which I have found so unbelievably moving. And so I wanted to see what would happen if I gave some Byzantine chant to David Von Kampen. And so this particular piece, and I hope if you have time to read some of the program notes, uh, you'll, you'll get an idea of what the piece is about. But originally, I had selected one of our baptismal chants, Osius Christon, and, um, and I wanted him to basically write an entire work on, on that beautiful chant. Um, let me just sing a little bit of that. It comes from uh, Galatians 3.27, those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And um, so in any event, uh, what I'd like to do is just sing a little bit of that thanks to my guys. So David was hard at work writing the piece based on that very, very beautiful, strong Greek Orthodox hymn. Well, during the course of this time, I chanted the funeral for our beloved priest, Father Nick's wife, Presbytera Vida. And we sing this very, very beautiful processional chant. And I was chanting this hymn and tears were welling up and I knew that, oh my gosh, I want David to use this hymn as well. So I immediately after the funeral um, sent the hymn to David and said, David, can you incorporate this beautiful processional hymn into the piece? And it became the title, Trisagium. This is the processional hymn that's also chanted on Holy Friday when we commemorate the burial uh, of Christ. And it is also sung at every Orthodox funeral. So for anybody that's listening that's Greek Orthodox, you've probably heard this melody when you said goodbye to someone that you loved very, very much. So we have a piece that incorporates the beginning of spiritual life and baptism and the beginning of eternal life with the Trisagion. I'd like to go ahead and chant the uh, Trisagion hymn for you. It comes from Isaiah 6. Adios Otheos, Adios Iskeros, Adios Athanatos. Ale sonimas, holy God, holy mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. So this is David von Kampen's Trisagion. I do want to mention this piece was commissioned by the Nebraska Music Teachers Association and also the Music Teachers National Association uh, commissioning program. And it will receive its official premiere at the state convention that UNL will be hosting in October.
Again, David, thank you for writing such a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of music. Um, I, I, I'll be playing that piece for the rest of my life, I'm sure. And uh, thank you again. Uh, I think it's so beautiful the way it, uh, it ties in everything. And thank you again for the Nebraska Music Teachers Association uh, and MTNA for, uh, for commissioning it um, as well. Um, again, uh, I just wanted to reiterate that the LEAD Center is going through an historically difficult time financially and is counting on its many members and those who deeply love the arts and understand that the arts are such an important part of being a human being. So I would encourage all of you to give to the greatest extent that you can to the LEAD Center as a result of, uh, uh, and hopefully that we can get them out of this, uh, this massive hole that they're all in. Um, I have a piece that I believe I'm going to play now. This is the piece that many of you have been waiting for quite a while. This is the last world premiere that I'll be doing tonight, and then I will be honoring many, many requests. Um, this is a piece that um, was commissioned by some very, very wonderful people uh, here in Lincoln. Uh, the, the Pearl Francis Finnegan Foundation has been an incredible support, and they were co-sponsors along with Mike and Amber Kutale. I think Amber is listening, and I'm sure, Leanne, you've got to be listening, um, and Rhonda Seacrest. They were the major, um, the major commissioners of the Annunciation Piano Quintet. And um, it's been such an incredible piece for me to play all over the world uh, and to play with so many different groups. Um, but having had to cancel so many performances, I was scheduled to, to do the Canadian premiere uh, on March 22nd. Uh, that didn't happen. I was supposed to play it in Korea in uh, May, and that will not happen yet. So I figured, well, I transcribed. That's what I do. So I wanted to go ahead and... Uh, work out a transcription uh, of, the, of the piano quintet. And so I'd like to chant a hymn for you. But before I do that, um, I would like to make a uh, very important call. Um, I talked this afternoon with uh, Philip Glass, and he was very interested in talking with me about this particular work. So I'm going to go ahead and try to give him a call and uh, see if we can see how he's doing in New York. Call Philip Glass. How are you doing? Hello, Philip. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Hi. Great. Listen, it's wonderful to have you here uh, amid the audience. Uh, first of all, I know that everybody is very interested in how you are handling life in New York right now. Could you let everybody know? Well, I, uh, we are uh, we're locked into our homes right now, so we, we can't leave. Uh, well, well, we could, but uh, uh, it's not advised to, we're not advised to do so. And, uh, but I'm involved with a very big uh, new music project, which is like a, uh, it's a circus opera, which I'm oh. waiting for company in Sweden. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, and uh, I lost a lot of concerts this year, as probably you know about that. Yes, very much so. So suddenly I had a lot of time on my hands, <laughs> and, and uh, it's been great. Uh, <laughs> because now I can, I was wondering, when was I going to have time to write this piece? Problem and, uh, solved. I, 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 I got the gift of uh, being uh, uh, locked up in my own home. Uh, <laughs> and so... So actually, um, I, I'm well. Oh, uh, I'm my, so glad. My, my, my children are three, uh, they're three, uh, uh, they're, they're, three doors they're down. The fourth floor. They're, they're yeah. Four. I'm on the first floor. So oh, I don't wonderful. actually see them, but we, we visit uh, on, on FaceTime. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, listen. So we're we... seeing each other on FaceTime. They're, they're, and they're being very careful. They don't leave the house either. Oh, that's I mean, good. Uh, no, uh, what, what I'm finding out, uh, uh, we're kind of fortunate because we have that information and we found it. But there are big problems in New York City. And, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, 
some yeah. of the uh, the African American community and especially the Spanish community. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, they either either didn't get that information or they weren't told about it or they yeah. didn't know what to do. But actually, if, uh, uh, it's very straightforward what, what you have to do, but it, yeah. it's, it's radical. I so, understand, yes. Well, Philip, I'm just wondering before I, before I let you go, I'm wondering if you, since I'm just getting ready to play the world premiere of my transcription of I the know. beautiful piano quintet that you wrote for me. So I wondered if you could tell everybody what it was like to write your first piece using Byzantine chant. Without a paycheck. <laughs> oh, it was fun. I didn't even notice, to tell you the truth. I was very interested in this. Uh, you gave me a, a, a theme. Yep, I'm uh, going to chant it in a minute. Yeah, and uh, I was very taken with that. I don't think I changed it too much, did I? Maybe no, not at all. You used it exactly. Yeah, but, I, but it doesn't come at the beginning. No. Uh, so if I, you first heard it, you probably were wondering where it was. But I, I buried it in the piece because I wanted it. I wanted it to be part of the piece and not yeah. an introduction to the piece. Right. That's why I did it that way. And uh, well. now, by the way, I, I haven't been able to hook up my. Uh, I have my phone here. Oh, okay. I, I, I wasn't able to. Uh, uh, I did. I, 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 I couldn't. I didn't have a password that worked. Oh, that's uh, okay. Don't worry about it. Well, listen, I'm well, going to go ahead and play the world go premiere. Go ahead, do it. Um, uh, thank you for the call. I'm very pleased that, that you're, you're, uh, oh, thank you. you're bringing this to so many people. Well, I, I, I appreciate it, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Uh, thank you, and I'm just glad you're well and, and obviously still writing, So because there's a lot of oh, people yeah. that are listening that are very happy about that. So thank uh, you so much, Philip. And you're I'm going to... Have, have a good performance. Okay, so, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, I wanted to have the opportunity for you all to hear Philip um, mention how much he's enjoying working on this project. Um, what I'd like to do now is play my transcription of the quintet. Um, and before I do that, what I'd like to do is chant the communion hymn uh, upon which it is based. So, again, this was based on the uh, communion hymn for the Feast of the Annunciation. The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. <laughs> the monks are really loud. This is the world premiere performance of my transcription of the first movement of Philip Glass Annunciation.
thank you again, Philip, for writing such a gorgeous piece. Thank you to everyone that so generously supported that entire project that is still living on and living on. Um, right now, it's time for the highlight of the evening. I would like to invite my wife, April Barnes, wonderful pianist, wonderful teacher. She's going to come up and we're going to do a beautiful uh, duet. This is a duet. Hi, sweetheart. This is a duet that we had the privilege of last, uh, last doing in Italy at, uh, when I taught at the Amalfi Coast Music Festival. It's a beautiful melody by Foré, and it's a pleasure for me to play with my
I would like to take a moment and um, introduce all of the wonderful artists that are going to be coming in May for these Lead Live online performance. This has been great fun, and I just can't thank Bill Stefan enough for inviting me to do this. Uh, we performing musicians are starved, so it's great to have an opportunity to play um, great, uh, great music for everyone. Um, so, in any event, coming up, Andrea von Kampen, the sister of composer David von Kampen, who I just played, will be on May 1st. April Birch, an international fiddle and step dancing champion, on May 8th. And the amazing Jackie Allen and my dear colleague Hans Sturm, uh, Nebraska's favorite jazz duo, on May 15th. So, in any event, uh, it's wonderful that there's a nice full lineup for weeks to come, and it's a great way for the LEAD Center to keep, uh, to keep the arts very, very much alive and uh, hopping. Um, now, I just realized I'm almost out of time, and I know that I did get a request uh, for one of the etudes that I've recorded. I believe it was etude number five, so I'm going to play that right now, if I can find it. There it is. Um, this is one of my um, most favorite etudes of all. I uh, recorded this on my New Generations uh, CD that came out uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, again, I can't thank the Lead Center enough uh, for giving me this opportunity. Please be generous uh, in your gifts. So this is Philip Glass, etude.
Thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure to uh, invite you into our living room. Thank you again, April, for playing with me. Thank you, Peter, for being the best sound engineer and photo photographic genius on the planet. Thanks again to everyone at the Lead Center for supporting all of this and for keeping things and holding things together in this very, very difficult time. So in any event, all of my students that are watching, you have one week of class. I'm going to be very hard on you for that one week and uh, look forward to it. I was also thrilled to hear the announcement from our chancellor that classes are going to be live with real bodies next fall. So that made a lot of us, it filled us all with hope. So uh, I'm excited to continue my uh, teaching as well. So in any event, thank you all and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.